In this video, we'll be learning how to get started with Lens Studio version 5 and publish our first Snapchat lens. All right, so the first thing you'll want to do if you haven't already is go to ar.snap.com slash lens dash studio and come over here and click download. Then here, um, you'll have to agree to the privacy policy and the uh, terms, usage agreement, etc. Uh, select your appropriate device and go ahead and click download and then install Lens Studio. All right, so when you first open Lens Studio, you'll be greeted by this home screen. So here we can see the version we're on, 5.1, uh, and then up here in the title bar, you can see some more information about that. Um, here are some options for starting a new project. If you've created a project before, your recent projects will show up here. And then there's also this library of sample projects. Um, I encourage you to look through those. But for this video, we're going to come up here and we're going to choose the default project. All right, so here is the main screen. And we're going to have a brief walkthrough of what all these different panels are so that we have a shared vocabulary as we start creating the project. Right here in the middle is the scene panel. And once we start adding 3D objects to a scene, I will be able to see them here. And I can hold down the right mouse button and rotate. And I can use my mouse wheel to scroll in and out as well. To add objects to our scene panel, we come up here to the scene hierarchy panel, or you might also know as the objects panel if you're coming from Win Studio 4. So these objects here are what are actually in our scene. Now down below that is the asset browser. If we want to add anything to our scene, this is where we'll do it. We can click on this button and we can scroll through. We have some different categories, different things we can add, or if we have a custom 3D model or image, we can click import asset and find it and import it there. Next up, we have the inspector panel. If I select something over here in my scene hierarchy, now you can see some options showing up over here. So for example, I've selected the camera and we can zoom in and we can take a look at these different options we have for our camera. And last area we're gonna take a look at is the preview panel over here. So as we add objects to our scene, we will see them show up here as they will show up in our lens. So we can use our previews here. We can switch to a webcam. If we click here where it says idle, there are some different um, people that we can look at. Um, they have different poses. So we have idle people. One of my favorites to use is smile person one because she turns her head and that's really useful for when you're setting things up on someone's head. But of course, depending on what kind of lens you're making, you'll want to change which preview you're using here. So I'll just switch back to idle. All right, so instead of creating some assets myself, uh, we're going to cheat a little bit. Well, it's not quite cheating, but we're going to use the asset library. So come up here and click on asset library. Now, when this loads up, we're going to start out on this featured section. So as new assets are added, um, they'll often show up in this featured section. So you can um, take a look. Most of these are by Snap Inc. But as we scroll through, you can see that some assets are created by the community. If you have something that you've created, that is something you can submit for consideration for inclusion in the asset library. So let's come over here. Let's go to the 3D section and let's just add these uh, sunglasses. So I'm going to use the glasses pack too. If you don't see this here because more assets have been added, you can come up here and you can search for glasses. And then you should be able to see them here and you can scroll through or view all to view everything that matches that search term. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the import button here. And that's gonna take just a moment and it has finished. So let's go ahead and close this. Now, if we come over here in our asset browser, we can see our glasses pack too, and we can expand this up and we can see a few different folders that have been created. So these are materials that come with the asset. Um, these are kind of locked off for editing because they're part of the asset. If we needed to change them, we could right click here and we should be able to come down to unpack for editing, but we don't need to do that today. So all we need to do is find this green prefab here. And this is put under main camera. So let's go ahead and drag it up to our scene. And I'm going to hold, hover this over my camera object and then release the mouse button. And now you can see first that we have a bunch of items over here in our scene. If we come to our little scene window here, 
and we can rotate around we can see those glasses and lastly in our preview we can see the glasses are now on this person so this yellow outline here is just kind of showing us that um, these objects are tracking a head so right here we can select head zero and we can see that there's this head binding component here so if we zoom in face index zero is the first face that's detected um, if we have multiple faces we could duplicate this and then come back over here and change that face index to one. This head binding means that anything underneath it will track the head. And we can see we have this head occluder. And so that is just this, you can see this blue thing here. And you can see that's just used to kind of block out the sunglasses as we come around the side of the head. If we select this mesh, you can see that there's this occluder material, which just means to hide things, not to actually show up. So you can see a few different sunglasses here. I can toggle the, the visibility. So let's say we want sunglasses two. Now we've added sunglasses two to our scene and you can see that our preview panel has updated as well. All right, now before we go any further, one thing I recommend you do as soon as you start adding things to your scene is to come up here and do file, save as, and save this project. Uh, Lin Studio, sometimes will crash depending on what's going on, especially version five because it's a brand new rewrite. And so they're still kind of working out some of the bugs. So just make sure that you are saving your project consistently and often so that you don't lose too much progress if it does crash. Uh, the stability is getting a lot better, but that is something that you should keep in mind. Uh, make sure you're saving your progress. All right, so now that we have a lens created, let's go ahead and prepare it to publish. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to click on project settings. Now this is going to open up a new window here. Uh, the first thing we want to do is give our lens a name. We'll just call this sunglasses. Uh, there is a character limit. Uh, it's somewhere around like 20 ish characters, somewhere around there. So the name can't be too long, uh, but try to make it descriptive. Now you probably won't want to change these platform settings. Um, mobile and web this is like people using the snapchat app web you can host your lenses through the web um, and then camera kit is if you embed this in your own app and then spectacles of course are the ar glasses uh, so we're just going to leave this as is our lens size we have a limit of eight megabytes you can see we're at 0 0.62 so we're all good there um, and then we don't need to worry about these api settings now a few things we do need to take care of are the lens preview and the lens icon. And you can see here that there's these little notes to make sure that we get the name icon and preview. So for the lens preview, we can click this plus button and we have a few different options. Uh, we can upload a video without the lens. So if we have like a custom video, just like a person, and then Lens Studio will apply our lens to that video. Alternatively, maybe we've tested that, it out on our device and we've recorded the video, we can upload that video with the lens already applied. Otherwise, we can come through these different preview videos and it's applied the lens to all of these. And so we can choose one of them. So let's choose this idle one here. Now you can see we have our preview video here. Uh, if we don't like it, we can remove the preview and try again. Uh, and then we also need to add a thumbnail. So I'm going to close out here for a second. Uh, you can create a thumbnail image in like Photoshop or something. Or if you want a really quick and dirty way to do it, come down here at the bottom of the preview panel. And this button here will take a still image of what is currently in the scene. So if I were to click this, it'll open up a file browser. I can save that image. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. And then once you've clicked save here in this logger here, you can see that our screenshot was saved to a file. So now I can come back to my project settings and I can click this button here to select that image for my preview. All right, so as you can see, there's also this option to use AI to generate an icon. If your lens is a little more abstract, that might work great. But since I have this 3D model of the sunglasses, I'm gonna go ahead and import that screenshot that I took. All right, so I've selected that image and I can kind of drag this around. I can adjust this so we can zoom in if we want so that we can really show those sunglasses there. And I will click Save Changes. Now we have our icon here. All right, so we we could publish our lens now, but before we do that, um, I'm gonna show you a couple other things that you'll want to do as you're first setting up Lens Studio. 
So I'm going to close out of here and I'm going to come up here and we'll want to preview our lens on our device and we'll want to log into our Snapchat account and that'll make the publishing process just a little bit more streamlined. So I'll go ahead and click log in here. And I'll open up my web browser um, and then here I can sign into my Snapchat account. Uh, so go ahead and do that. All right, so once you've logged in, you'll be given the screen to connect to Lens Studio. And so it's just going to access your Snapchat account to submit lenses. Um, there's gonna be some data that sends a snap uh, with some of the machine learning functionality, um, uh, just some things like that. It's fine to click continue. All right, so once we've successfully authenticated, we can come back to Lens Studio. Now you can see instead of that ghost icon, you can see my little bit emoji icon here. That means I'm logged in, and if I click this button, it'll open up the My Lenses web portal where you can view and manage the lenses you've published. Now, the last thing we want to do uh, before you publish a lens, I always recommend testing it on your device. So if you've never opened up or used Lens Studio before, you'll have to pair your device. So I'm going to click this little drop down here, and I want to pair a new Snapchat account. I'm going to click that. This is going to give me a snap code. So now I'm going to open up the Snapchat app and scan this code. All right, so here I have the app and I'm going to come over here. We got a snap code, so I'm going to open it. It's going to ask me to pair with Lens Studio. So I'll pair, popped up a couple times. And now you can see it's saying sending lens. So now back on my device, I get this notification and the lens will load and now uh, I can try it out. So you can see on this person, it's supplying it double. And if we switch to the back cam, you can see that I now have the lens on my face. And then this little area here, if you tap that little kind of bug icon, this is just some performance information about the lens. All right, so now that we've tested out our lens, we've given it a name icon and preview, let's go ahead and publish. So we can go back to our project settings to publish, or over here at the top right, we can click on publish. And then that will open up a web browser once it's finished exporting our lens. All right, so the first step is to select a lens folder. So you can create a new lens folder if you haven't already, or you can choose one here. So I'll just go ahead and choose this one here. And then I'll click Submit Lens. All right, so here we can see our preview, and we can change it if we need to our lens icon and our name. And you might notice that the icon and preview don't seem to be showing up well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and publish. I'm not sure if it's just because it's a new version of Lens Studio. Maybe the web portal's having issues. Um, if we come back to Lens Studio, we can double check things here. We have the preview and the icon. Um, so if things are going wrong in the tutorial, what can I say? All right, so ignoring those issues, uh, the first thing we'll, we'll need to do is select a primary category. So I can come in here and choose um, self-expression, camera styles, games, etc. Um, maybe we could say that this is fashion and retail. Let's call it eyewear. And if you want to add a second category, you can do that as well. Uh, so maybe we could call this moods or something. Now, next up, we have these tags. These just kind of help categorize what your lens is. Um, so we could type sunglasses and hit enter, and that's a tag. Now, below here are some tags of the month. So if your lens is themed to one of these things, like say Halloween, you could click on this and then it adds this specific tag and that gives your lens a chance to be featured in relation to whatever event is here. Now, our last few sections, this scan triggers. Um, if you're scanning something with the Snapchat app and it recognizes something, it might pull up lenses related to that. So we have dog, cat, animal, person, food. I'll put person. Uh, but what you can also do is you can actually start typing to search. So we could search for sunglasses. And so if somebody scans sunglasses with the app, then our lens has a chance to show up as a recommended lens. Now this call to action uh, lets you add a link to your lens. Not everybody has access to it, so I'm gonna skip that. Um, but once we have all that information filled out, we can click on publish. It'll let you know this will be published to your profile. We can make sure it's public which anyone can search for it. If it's hidden, you can use the link or snap code, but it won't show up uh, on your profile or in searches. Or if it's offline, maybe you're not quite ready for it to publish. You don't want it to be used at all. Um, maybe you have a lens you want to take down. 
you can set it to offline. And then lastly, if you want your lens to be eligible for the Lens Creator Rewards program, right down here, you can toggle this here. Now, since this is just a tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and mark mine hidden, and then we'll hit publish. All right, so your lens will go into review. Uh, usually it's going to be a couple hours. Um, so you'll get an email once it's been published, or if there are any issues, your email will say what went wrong and what you might need to fix. So the lens is now published and live. So you can see that um, inside um, my lenses, if I have that one selected, you can see that is published. We can see that the icon and the preview did come through. It looks like it was just um, my lens is not displaying that properly while submitting. So that's good. Uh, so we can see all this information here. If we want to share it, uh, we can click that and it'll copy the link or we can download the snap code to share that way. Um, and so if you do need to change anything about your lens, you can come in here, you can take it offline, you can make it go public, you can keep it hidden, etc. Uh, but this is our lens. And as our lens gets used, the insights will start to populate and we can kind of see what lenses are resonating with Snapchat users.